Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can find a material model uh, for, for a soft, flexible foam that has a very different response in tension and in compression. So the data on the screen shows that the stress-strain curve in compression is much softer than it is in tension. And of course, this has to do with the microstructure of the foam, cell buckling, and all of those things. But the question here is, what material model can do this? And how would you actually be able to achieve this if you want to simulate such a material? Um, so let's take a look at this. I'm going to start by uh, showing you the experimental data. We have two files here. It's going to open them with a text editor. It has time, engineering strain, and engineering stress. And um, I, I'm going to just read these in by click, selecting both. I copy them to the clipboard. And I'm going to use the M calibration software from Polymer FEM uh, to solve this problem. So uh, let's have uh, a little bit more normal looking window here. And here we go. I'm going to paste this experimental data from the clipboard. And here it is. I'm going to plot engineering stress, engineering strain. So here's our starting point. Uh, let's see what kind of material model can do this. One choice you may think is a good idea is the basic approach that people use for foams, soft foams. And that's, uh, that's called the Ogden foam model in ANSYS or hyperfoam model in Abacus. Can that predict this, this response? Well, let's take a look. So I'm going to select, select the material model. Let's try the ANSYS Ogden foam model. Let's just take two terms. And um, if I run once here, we'll see what's going on. Oh, it's way too stiff. The dashed lines are way too stiff compared to the experimental data. So I'm going to scale down the mu parameters. It's going to play around a little bit here first uh, using the M calibration software. You make mu1 and mu2 equal, but 10 times smaller. Okay, it's still a little too large. So we do 0 0.02, 0 0.02. And now it's starting to look like it's in the right region. But we'll see that it's way too stiff in compression and it's way too soft in tension. This asymmetry is very hard to capture using an Ogden foam or hyperfoam model. What if we play with the uh, alpha parameters? Uh, how about we make alpha actually negative? How about negative 2? And we'll see, well, oh, that was too much. Now it became uh, really weird. It's uh, Even though we compress it, we get the tensile stress. It's because this mu is too large. So I'm going to make this mu four times smaller. So I'm going to just type in divided by four. So we get a math equation that uh, M calibration evaluates for us. Now we're starting to see interesting behavior, but it becomes very unstable very quickly in compression. It's still not good in tension. Um, this can't actually work out. This is not the way to simulate this kind of asymmetry between tension and compression in soft foams that, that I'm studying here. So what do we do instead? Well, let's see if we can come up with a different material model. And there is a choice here that works uh, actually well, and that is a material model from the PolyUMOD library. So I'm going to pick a PolyUMOD parallel network model. I don't typically recommend these models, but in this case, this is one of the few models that can actually do this in a good way. So I'm picking parallel network, and I'm picking under the elastic type. You see that there are a lot of different elastic options here. Some of these are really cool and, and can really do some interesting stuff. So the one I want to work with here is hyperfoam with different stiffness, intention, and compression. That sounds pretty good. I can set how many terms I want. One is probably enough here. So add this network, I say OK. And here's now my material model. Um, if I run once before we think about this, we'll see what's going on. And it looks like there is a slightly different slope between tension and compression. It's still way too stiff. We need to fix this, right? So how do we fix that? Well, the, the parameters here uh, you may not be familiar with. So if you have a situation like this, well, I don't know what this UTC whatever thing is. Well, you can look at what that means from the polymod manual by clicking on that. And then I happen to jump directly to the section here, but you can find it in this uh, uh, to the left here otherwise. So it says that mu TC is the shear modulus in tension divided by the shear modulus in compression. Exactly what we are looking for, right? And then there's the Ogden parameters, the hyperfoam kind of things at the bottom. So 
let's take a look here. Um, we need to reduce the stiffness first. So that's the mu parameter. I'm going to make it uh, a little bit smaller. We'll run it one time to see what happens. And um, here it is. Wow, oh, it looks like we're a little bit better now, right? We do need a bigger difference between tension and compression here. So like, it's still too stiff in compression, but it's too stiff in tension too. So the difference between tension and compression is this mu t divided by c parameters. So it's 2. Let's make it 10. And the stiffnesses are still too large. So I'm going to re reduce this one even further. So I'm going to divide it by 2, perhaps. And then I run this one. I haven't optimized it yet. I'm just playing a little bit with this model to see what's going on. And now look at this crazy. We finally got a model that is way too uh, stiff in tension. Yeah, but it, it has a very good asymmetry, just like we need the we see in the experimental data. So um, let's reduce this a little bit even more. So we'll divide this by three. And we'll run it one more time. Um, and we'll see that we're starting to look really good now. Uh, at this point, I'm, I'm saying, well, let's stop playing with this. Let's start searching for the actual parameters to match the data. Um, what do we do? Uh, well, we need to figure out which of these parameters to be searched for. They're very tempting to just search for all of them. But in this case, and in many cases, it's not the best solution to do. The second parameter, if you read the manual, you'll see that this is shear versus compression. We don't know anything about that. Again. It's always important to have enough experimental data. RP0 is something we don't really know either. And um, the beta is related to the Poisson's ratio. We don't have info about that either, so we turn that off. We can search for alpha, mu, and this one. Those are clearly important here. Um, perhaps alpha is not that useful because the curves are almost straight. And alpha controls the, the, how the shape of the curve, more or less. So I might as well turn that off um, just to you know, try this. So let me start the calibration from this point. Um, it's good enough for starting the calibration. So it's going to run calibration. I'm going to do a, um, let's just do a slow, careful calibration from this uh, location where we are right now. So it's going to tweak these parameters, the two that are selected as being searched for, tweak them a little bit, and um, we should be able to see a little bit of progress as this uh, progresses. Um, it's a relatively simple calibration from, from this point on. It, uh, you're just looking at it as it's working. You can see that the stiffness needs to go down a little bit more, for example. But you see the point. The point here is that uh, with M calibration, we can quickly calibrate, explore different materials. And in this very challenging case where we have different tension and compression, there are good solutions for also those complicated uh, problems. In this case, the solution that works is a specialized material in the polyumod library. Sometimes that's necessary, sometimes it's not. But it's good to be aware of what the choices are so you can make the right decision for the particular problems you're working on. If you have any questions, uh, just feel free to reach out uh, to write your questions in the comments below. And um, hope you uh, found this useful.